This presentation is about copyright in 2012, presented by Mark DeSandy in the Pecha Kucha presentation format for Vancouver Community College 32240 PIDP. What is copyright? Copyright is a sole right to produce or reproduce a work or any substantial part thereof in material form, to perform the work or any substantial part thereof in public, or if the work is unpublished, to publish it. It essentially is copying someone else's work. The evolution of copyright started before Canada was its own country. It was under British law of copyright. Things were muddled and unclear. They stayed that way for a while due to the state of Canada's Charter of Rights, but in 1922 the first Canadian Copyright Act was initiated. It changed multiple times until 2010, adjusting for technology such as tapes, TV recordings, software, and many other advancements in technology. Many of the changes seen throughout the decades came from Canada striving to be in sync with international laws and regulations. The World Intellectual Property Organization, or WIPO, has 185 states and administers 24 international treaties, helping relationships for copyrights to stay somewhat standard from nation to nation. Copyright is automatically created when a person creates something that is an, orig an original literary, dramatic, musical, or artistic work. This includes software. Essentially, if you created it and it's original, you can copyright it. Actually, it's automatically copyrighted if you can prove that you were the original creator. To prove you the original creator, there has to be no contest to the fact that you came up with it first. This can be done in a few ways. There simply must be documentation of the date of origin. There are a few things that would stand up in an argument related to copyright, such as a video, pictures, witnesses, or other. But if you can, simply email yourself a copy of the material probably think that someone who has this on their work went through tedious measures to accomplish copyright. But in reality, all you need to do is mark your work, including the year and possibly the date, use the copyright symbol, and your name. You don't need to do anything else, but maybe you should. Directly from the Canadian Intellectual Property Office, they state, although copyright in a work exists automatically, a certificate of registration is evidence that your creation is protected by copyright and that you, the person registered, are the owner. It can be used in court as evidence of ownership. Registering with them costs around $50 and will give your work added protection and more efficiently document your work as your own. Once this is done, did you know your work will be protected for 50 years beyond your death? but everything made before 1922 is fair game in Canada. Copyright has a lot of implications in many different fields, and it essentially serves to make sure that people get credit for the work they create, and no one steals their work. Some say it's a monetary concept related to getting paid for your work. Some say it's about getting credit for your work, in a creative sense, of course. Others, they say it's both. Whether in the film industry, the music industry, or in education, one must consider the use of other works, other work in their own. The concept of fair dealing is important. The Supreme Court of Canada uses six principles or criteria to evaluate fair dealing. We'll review them here. The first one is purpose. What are you using your work for? Research, private study, in a criticism, reviews, or news reporting. Number two is character of dealing. How many copies are you making? How many people is it going out to? And again, back to the purpose for that one. Number three is the amount of dealing. How much of the material was used? Did you just quote a sentence, an entire paragraph? Did you quote the entire work? Number four asks whether or not there's alternative options you could have used, an equivalent piece of work that you could have used instead of the copyrighted piece that you did. Number five is the nature of the work you used. The copied work may have been published, unpublished, or confidential. This is taken into consideration as well. Finally, number six is the effect on the work. Will you using it affect the market of the original work? For instance, are you slandering it, changing its income, such of that. Bill C-11 changed the face of Canadian copyright in 2012. Essentially, fair dealing is, is used in Canada to ev evaluate. It's different from the American fair use policy, and this bill will bring the two closer to being the same. Regardless of the change, changes and the effect it has on the sex fair dealing principles, educators should know what their copyright means. For us, it changed in these ways. Number one, education was added to fair dealing. It previously was not part of it. 
Number two, the creation of non-commercial user-generated content. A provision has been made to create a legal safe harbor for creators of non-commercial content and, use, uh, and for sites that host such content. Educators can now use it in this provision. Number three is new distinction of commercial and non-commercial infringement. Distinguishing between these two for the purpose of statutory damages. The change applies to educational institutes engaging in the non-commercial activity. Number four is a distance learning provision, which previously was not included in the law. It reduces significant restrictions. Number five, exceptions for publicly available materials on the internet. This covers the content found in millions of websites that can now be communicated and reproduced by educational institutes without the need of permission or compensation. Number six, expands adoption of technology neutral approach. Previously, the provision only worked for manual reproduction or overhead production. Number seven, library to library sharing of digital materials. This will allow an increased access to materials for libraries acquired by universities. Number eight, a new exception for public performances in schools, which will reduce licensing costs for, additional, for educational institutes. In my opinion, the most important part of copyright is that people get where cre credit where credit is due, and that no one trying to claim that someone else's work is their own original work. For proper referencing on citations in written work, you can go to your local school or library to find out the proper ways to credit people for their work. On my last slide, you can see the references from my own presentation. Thanks for listening.